My name is Sarah Dietschy, rhymes with peachy, and if I were to describe myself before mentioning YouTuber, interneter, first and foremost, I would say video editor. So the fact that the program I use every day to make big videos with works on this thin iPad is actually pretty crazy. Shout out to Logitech for sponsoring this video. Their MX mice and keyboards are now mastered for Mac. I've always been such a huge fan. More on them later. And guess what? I am back in New York. So it's kind of like a half happy birthday to John. Woo! <laughs> And also, you know, we have uh, like videos and things to make. Our hotel situation was interesting. We got here and this was our hotel. It's very tiny. <sighs> Bless you. Thank you. Look at this and it's so dark. That literally opens up to like an alleyway, like a rooftop alleyway. So we don't even have natural light. And then this bathroom, we can barely fit. 459 and flat iron. I don't, I think we got it. Mix match. There's no way this is actually for fifty. This can't be right now. And they were like, I don't think this is gonna work. And they said for fifty dollars more, you can upgrade to a normal hotel room. So my objective for this fun little trip is not to just say, hey, hello, hi, how are you, to New York City, but also to figure out DaVinci Resolve on iPad. Because I think it's like, you know, this missing link, professional software for the iPad. However, there's a catch. Instead of the normal DaVinci Resolve edit page, it's the cut page. This is a page that I've completely ignored Resolve since switching over to this as my NLE two years ago, three years ago now. And so that means I actually have to relearn how to edit and Resolve, which kind of defeats the purpose because I was ready to just hop right into it. So I'm hoping you guys can learn with me. And already on the airplane ride over here, I was like, Sarah, you definitely judge people who use iPads as laptops. To a lot of those people, I'm just like, get a laptop, you know? Um, but yeah, Rocking the 11 inch over on the plane, you know, where it's a little tight. I was actually able to get everything I needed to done and it was, you know, super portable. And I think for the past couple years, I've just been doing a lot of judging and not trying it again because the Magic Keyboard doesn't suck the battery of the latest pros as much. So, so far I have only used my iPad. This is like a don't use your laptop challenge for four days. <laughs> really good about having Resolve on the iPad for video editors, you can really start your project from anywhere. I'm not going to pretend like you can't do this with a laptop because, well, you can, but my 11 inch iPad, it is smaller, lighter, more portable, and the derp files, I always thought it was funny that .derp, that's like the Resolve file, so you can take the .derp file start it on your iPad, but then bring it over to your desktop or laptop when you're ready to get serious about the edit and add more, because I'm definitely not used to this cut page yet. iPad has covered other creatives pretty well. So you have Illustrators, you have Procreate and Adobe Fres Fresco, Fresno. You have Photoshop and Lightroom for photographers on iPad. That is really great and it really utilizes the Apple Pencil. And the people who have kind of been forgotten are the video editors like, hey, outside of LumaFusion, which is great on iPad, but it really hits a wall when it comes to professional workflows. So the version of DaVinci Resolve that I have on my iPad now, it is in beta, which means it is not released to the public yet. They don't have a date, but I'm using it and it feels good. It's working good. So hopefully it'll be out there soon. This is also the free version. It is not the studio version, same as with the desktop. So you'll be able to download this in the app store like a normal app. And if you want to upgrade to the studio version, it'll be a $95 one-time purchase, not a subscription, but a one-time purchase, just like the desktop version. And I asked him, hey, if you have the license to the studio version for desktop, uh, do you get this for free? Um, and they said, no, it is an additional $95 purchase, even if you have desktop studio version, which I feel like is fine. Again, these one-time purchases are way less cost intensive than a monthly subscription like with Adobe. And they also said, hey, this is the same exact code base as Resolve on desktop. So it's not some watered down version. It's kind of crazy when you go over to the color page, um, look, you have your same nodes, you can do the same keyboard shortcuts, add serial node, and adding things like saturation, 
highlights, contrast. It's just super easy, whether I'm using the Apple Pencil or just my finger. It actually works really well, and the color page looks exactly like the color page on desktop, which is crazy. The cut page, however, is like a weird version of Final Cut's magnetic timeline. And instead of changing the entire normal NLE editing timeline that we're all used to, they stuck it in another page and said, hey, this is gonna help you edit faster, but throw out everything you know about editing and just get used to it this other way, because I promise it'll save time if you spend that upfront time learning it. So I will say, whether you're coming from Resolve or Desktop or another program like Premiere or Final Cut, this is still gonna be jarring learning how to edit on the cut page. So it's not exactly as plug and play as I wish it would be for just picking up my iPad to edit. I will say a lot of these features on the cut page lend to actually editing with an Apple Pencil though. So even though we have, you know, the Magic Keyboard and all these great accessories, uh, this really is a way to edit with your finger or with the Apple Pencil. And they're actually really thoughtful of some of these new features on the iPad Pro, like Apple Pencil Hover, where I'm not even selecting one of these clips, but I'm hovering over them and I can preview them super quickly. This is 4K, 422, 10-bit footage from my Sony, actually 420 footage. Um, it's a little bit easier to scroll through, but as you can see, it's just extremely easy to preview clips with this new Apple Pencil Hover feature. I'm really glad that they thought of that. It's like magic. It's crazy. So I'm stopping at v &H right now because I need to pick up another Logitech MX keys and mouse for Mac because this video you're watching right now I am editing some of it on the iPad. It's a very, very meta uh, video. But speaking of that, thank you Logitech for sponsoring this video. The Logitech Master Series has always worked with Mac, but now they have truly been designed and developed with Mac users in mind. They have a Mac key layout, USB-C to USB-C charging, and space gray and pale gray finishes. I set up my iPad New York City hotel setup with the beautiful MX Mechanic mechanical mini for Mac keyboard and the MX Master 3S for Mac in pale gray. It just matches the Mac aesthetic so well. The MX Mechanical Mini offers a low profile and a quiet mechanical typing experience with brown switches. Smart illumination turns on the backlit keys when you approach the keyboard for optimal battery life. And the MX Mechanical Mini, MX Keys Mini, or MX Keys for Mac perfectly pairs with an MX Series mouse, which is my all-time favorite series of mice. This is the MX Master 3S for Mac. It's fitted with their most accurate sensor for epic precision and responsiveness. The feeling of this mouse is my absolute favorite. It is so comfortable for when you're at your desk editing for hours and hours at a time. And this 3S version has an extremely quiet click. The scrolling is quick enough to scroll 1,000 lines per second and precise enough to stop on a pixel. With their Logitech Options Plus software, you can customize how your MX Master 3S for Mac functions based on what app you're in. So hey, I want you to live your best productive life. Elevate your experience editing that video or tackling that spreadsheet with the MX series for Mac. There is truly something for everyone, so you can check out my link in the description below if you wanna check it out. Okay, back to talking Resolve on iPad. Okay, so this is my first time editing in Resolve on iPad. It's a little quirky. I had to learn, honestly, a lot of new things that I'm not used to. Let's just show this little montage that I edited together. Uh oh, here they come. So a section of Fifth Ave is actually closed down every Sunday in December. Oh my God, it looks like they're all coming for There's us. literally a mob coming I know. Us. are closed down and there's just like people everywhere walking everywhere 
Okay, so my guess is you wanna hop in and try this. So here is a quick tutorial. If you're used to normal Resolve or Premiere, I would go over here and click Free Playhead. The scrubbing on the timeline will feel the most natural. Up here, you have the top timeline. So instead of doing what you're used to on a normal timeline, zooming in and out with the plus and minus button, you use the top timeline to quickly move around and then you do everything on this lower timeline in regards to editing. This is extremely hard to get used to. It just is. These two buttons over here mean, hey, I just want to bring the video of this clip down to the timeline so it doesn't bring the audio with it. And say you just wanna bring the audio, well, you would click that other button. Click this button to enable audio trimming. So when you grab a clip and you wanna trim it, it'll just turn it into a full waveform so you can more precision edit, uh, you know, according to the audio. In any iPad app, you just hold down command and that will show you the shortcuts for said app. This is all the basic ones. So I'm sure you guys know already J, K, L, L to go forward, press it down twice to go two times, K to stop, and then J for reverse. You have the classics like I for setting the end point, O for setting the out point. But here are more of the important keyboard shortcuts that aren't on that menu. You're going to use command backslash a lot. That's to just split a clip and then you can press delete to delete it. Because this is very similar to Final Cut's magnetic timeline, the only reason why this clip here didn't snap to the one on the left is because you have audio. So right now we just have like dead space that it inserted, but if I press delete, you'll see it'll ripple delete back. Everything about the cut page is about editing quick, getting your clips and just laying them down on the timeline quick. So you can go into this view, they call it the source tape. It combines all of your clips together. You see the little white lines are separating the clips and you can basically go in here and just start pressing I and O, setting in and out points and dropping the clips down to a timeline. Okay, so what are the smart ways that you can drop clips down into the timeline? So it all starts with setting your in and out points. Say you wanna drop that to the timeline. I have four main ways to do that. We're gonna go from the left to the right. So on the left here, we have smart insert. So if you see this little triangle, it's essentially going to guess where you want to put the clip. If you're just laying down a ton of A-roll, uh, say you have your timeline over here and there's nothing to the right over here, it's pretty obvious that, hey, you're probably going to want to insert the clip here. So instead of you having to drag your mouse to the end of the clip and then press a shortcut to up in the clip on the timeline. It's just gonna guess that you wanna do that even if your playhead is all the way to the left. So watch what happens where this clip goes when I press smart insert. Boom, so it just shoved all the clips down and it smart inserted the clip right here where that little triangle was. Even if you're just using the mouse, when you grab the clip and bring it down to the timeline, as you can tell, it literally just like snapped to exactly where you probably wanna put it at the end. So this is something that I actually got used to really quick. I just grab clips and like throw them down. You don't have to be precise with it and it actually does speed up things once you get used to it. You just gotta commit to, well, watching a video like mine to learn it and then get in there for 15 minutes and you'll actually start noticing it is quicker. If we go to the second icon, this is going to app in the clip to the end of your clips. Boom. The third icon is ripple overwrite. This is going to replace the entire clip in your timeline that your playhead is over with the clip that you have selected up here. So we'll press that. Boom. So as you can see, it replaced the entire clip, but it kept the two clips to the left and right of it in the same places. If you ever see a little triangle like this, you can right click uh, to see more of your options, but this one is a pretty cool one. It's a close up. So if you're doing an interview, this is an easy, quick way to just get a close up of the person who you're interviewing or a close up of the clip. I've actually had some bugs with this feature. So it worked on this clip, but it did not like this clip for some reason. So say if I wanted to manually zoom in here. You just press this. And then here are um, some of the normal controls that you're used to. You can move it around. Uh, this is the X and Y axis. So a lot of the main features that you want are here. You also have noise reduction and stabilizing footage. You even have dynamic zoom, which is a favorite in Resolve. Okay, so hopefully that gives you the confidence to just try it. But if you are a professional video editor, well, we actually need to talk about the limits. 
The biggest limit for me is no keyboard shortcuts. You can't load it up into files. There's no menu for it. And so all of those things that I just taught you how to do, like smart insert, a pin, ripple overwrite, you have to like actually press the buttons or manually move the clips to the timeline and not use keyboard shortcuts. If you video edit for a job, you most likely use keyboard shortcuts for everything. But the reason why you can't use the keyboard shortcuts is because they're just not accessible from the magic keyboard. You have a pin, which is shift plus F12. You can't actually access those. I guess you could make some fancy macros. So if you plug in a keyboard, like thankfully I had my beautiful Logitech keyboard uh, hooked up. So I was using the keyboard shortcuts while I edited. But if I was out and about like the iPad usually is, and I only had the magic keyboard, I just can't use the keyboard shortcuts. If I had the ability to customize them, well, I could of course change the keyboard shortcuts to something accessible by the magic keyboard. Keyboard. The top timeline of the cut page on desktop is much more flexible. You're able to actually grab the clips, move them around. Now I feel like this is huge because you need a quick way to just go and select a ton of clips and move them. Instead, scroll to that audio that I wanted to delete at the end of the timeline, then select it on my bottom timeline. And if I was on the desktop, well, I would have just grabbed it on the top timeline because remember, you have no ability to zoom out on that bottom timeline. Reminder, I'm still using the beta and Resolve's goal is to release something that is stable and then slowly build features on top of it as the time goes by. Uh, I mean, I feel like this is still kind of a game changer because again, remember, you can do a lot of the initial edit on your iPad, your skinny iPad, and then pick up with the derp file, you know, you can export it or you can pick it up in DaVinci Resolve Cloud if you use that. I mean, I exported this 40 second timeline. I did a ProRes export. It exported in only 10 seconds. The more I use this, I got so used to not having to like precisely drop your clip on the timeline. You can just dump it and it snaps directly to the end. Oh my gosh, wait, is this what you Final Cut editors have been talking about this entire time? Now you don't see the Fusion page anywhere, but uh, there's a really great YouTuber who covers Resolve, Patrick Sterling, who he's actually used some of his Fusion effects already on the iPad, which is super cool, super powerful. Again, we're finally seeing, hey, an app that is using the power of this new M2 chip on the iPad Pros, which is really cool. So the beta is reserved right now to just M1 and M2 iPads, but Resolve has said, hey, we are expecting this to work still on the older processors, like the 2020 iPad, Pro, the A12Z, processors like that. So time will tell. I'll let you know about that. Some features might be limited on the older iPads, but I believe it will support them. Sometimes when you're in the cut page and it's showing you, hey, here's the beginning of the first clip and the end of the second clip. Sometimes the second clip doesn't update as quick and you kind of have to lift off and then it'll update. So it's not like perfectly smooth, but it's still super impressive. This has been so crazy. It's been good to be back in New York City and also bring you along this adventure of Resolve and iPad. Obviously it's not perfect, but it actually kind of surpassed my expectations. Having the full color page, I'm completely used to it. I'm able to change the values super easily, get my looks. But again, I use Film Convert and their plugin doesn't work yet on iPad. And some little things like fusion effects, they kind of work but not all of them. And so I'm expecting a lot of updates to, to come along, but the fact that like, okay, it works, it works pretty well. Yes, you have to kind of relearn editing in general because it's the cut page instead of the edit page. That was a little bit disappointing, but I look forward to future updates. And yeah, let me know what you thought about New York. No, we're not moving back. I tweeted out that we're in New York and people are like, you're moving back. Mm, no we're, way. we're good on Texas, but it was good to be here. And it was very cold. Very. Yeah, it was very cold. But let me know what you guys think. Are you going to use Resolve? Do you think this can be a complete replacement? I don't really think that yet, but it is super cool to start projects on, get them maybe 70% there, and then finish up on your desktop, right? So. Let me know what you think. Like this video, hit that subscribe button, and shout out to Logitech for sponsoring this video. Check out my links in the description below. Um, they are bringing, you know, the classics and making it specifically designed for Mac, and they're really great. I've used them for such a long time, so it's cool to be able to show them off to you. Signing off from New York, like, sub, a step peachy.
It's getting louder by the second. I, I know. Feel like okay. It. okay. Bye. <laughs>